Hey guys, Sudotech here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to kick off the third episode of Linux from scratch where we're making our own operating system. In the last video, we went over the first package, which is Binutils, and today we're just going to power on through, going from GCC all the way through 10 packages until check. That should us get the, through the entire second section of the LFS book and through constructing a temporary system in probably the next two or three episodes, which will be nice to be done with it because this is kind of the boring part and then it gets a little bit more interesting. For this video, I'm just gonna be rolling right on through every single package. If you remember from the last video, it's fairly simple. First, we're gonna unpack the tarball. We're gonna change to the directory that we just created. Then we're gonna follow on where the book picks up, which is where we're gonna set some system variables for it to like work, make sure it compiles correctly. Finally, do make which, by the way, in this video, I'm going to be using make-j4. The j4 basically means that it's going to do multi-threaded make, which is going to make it a lot faster if you want to do that. So if you have a multi-core CPU, I have an i5, so I'm using four because I have four cores. But it also works if you have two cores or six cores or eight cores. Feel free to do that. If you want to learn more, I'll leave a link in the description down below to the section of the last video, right? Just the link will take you straight to the right section. It'll take you less than a minute. I'll go over it again. Hold up, it's me from the future. We're not getting into it quite yet. Just kidding, it'll be a minute, but I just wanted to take a moment to thank the people that you're seeing on screen right now because they left a bunch of awesome feedback on my previous videos, and I've now bumped up the font size, as they suggested, to a little bit higher kind of font, font size, I guess you call it, just so that's easier to read. Hopefully it's better. If it's not, let me know down below, and let's get on to our first package now. GCC is a pretty important package. It includes the C and C++ compilers, which is why it's going to go first. It's also pretty big. It's going to take 8.3 SBUs, which if you remember is that 8.3 times how long it took you to do bin utils. If you're going to do dash J4 like I'm going to do it, it'll cut down on that time a lot, but it'll mean that SBUs are a lot less accurate. So let's go ahead and unpack the tarball using tar-xvf and then GCC. Just use tab to do a code complete and it should get you to the correct package. Use cd, change directory, to get to the correct directory that you just created, and then we're going to pick up with the book. GCC requires a few more tarballs that you can use the code in the book, which is tar-xf dot dot slash mpfr tab, and then a few other packages that are just tar files. You're going to use those and then move it to the correct directory so that you can use them when the GCC compiles. We have to use the next section of commands in the book to change the default dynamic linker of GCC, and we're gonna make it use this one in slash tools, which is the directory that we're building in, instead of the general directory so that we build it onto the LFS system instead of our host system. Lastly, we're gonna make a new directory using make dr v build so that we can build it in there. Certain packages require that, and GCC is one of them. Just make sure you're doing it when it requires and not when it doesn't. It'll tell you in the book. Finally, we're going to prepare from compilation with this long list of different things that we're going to set the variables to. These do things like changing the prefix to slash tools, again, so that it installs in the tools directory of our LFS drive instead of our host system. Finally, we can do make, in my case, dash J4, and make install. It's going to take a while. The make usually takes quite a bit longer, and the install is pretty, it's pretty much a quick process. I'm going to speed it up in this video. So that the time flies by and it doesn't take you that long, but keep in mind this is a pretty long package, so be prepared to wait a little bit. I won't mention this for every package, but it's important when you're done compiling to go back to the root of the sources directory and delete, in this case, the GCC folder, or whatever was created when you unpack the tarball. This will just save a lot of disk space because they're not really necessary, so we're just going to go ahead and get rid of them. Keep in mind that this isn't actually deleting anything on your system because all of our compiled packages are stored in the tools directory. All right, next we're gonna install Linux API headers. This is actually a fairly small package because we're only gonna be compiling part of it, which is the part that's required by our next package, DLIBC. To do this, unpack the tarball, change the directory, and then use make MR proper to make sure there's no stale files embedded in the package, just so that it's all clean and good to go. Next we're gonna do a kind of special make install, which is going to install the headers. And then we're going to copy that to the tools directory. You can find the commands again in the Linux from scratch book. We'll have a link down below. You should already have access to it if you've been following along with the rest of the tutorials. GLIBC is the main C library for your machine. Therefore, it's pretty important because a lot of programs use C and C++. Unpack the tarball, change to the directory, and this one actually requires a new separate build directory as well, similar to what GCC required. Gonna prepare it for compilation, which is quite a bit shorter than the GCC package, but it's still important changing it to tools and other things like that. On this version, there's two little errors that you might encounter. First of all, it's, there's a configure warning that might happen when you're trying to configure it. 
and it'll say something along the lines of these auxiliary programs are missing or then a bunch of other code. If that happens, it shouldn't be an issue. It's generally harmless and I, I wouldn't really worry about it. But if you have problems later, that could be the cause, but I don't really think it will. There also seem to be cases where building the package might fail, resulting in an error that says parallel make. This is because it's actually trying to do it on multiple cores. So to fix that, use dash J1 and that'll force it to use one core, should be fine after that. Again, do make and then make install. At this point, it's very important that we test the functions of compiling and linking. So to do that, we're gonna run this little snippet of code that you can find in the book. Basically, it's gonna create two very short files and then it's gonna run them to make sure they get a certain output. It should say requesting program interpreter and then a fairly simple file slash tool slash lib slash ld dash linux dot so dot two. If you're on a 64-bit system, it'll be slightly different with some extra 64s and x86s tossed in there. If you get something like that, you should be good to go. Finally, use rm dash v dummy dot c and a dot out to delete the files that we just created just to clean up the system. They're not required anymore. All right, we're getting there. lib stdc plus plus. As the name implies, this is another C++ library, so it's again pretty important. It's actually part of the GCC package, so unpack the tarball again for GCC, change to that directory, and then we'll start from there. This requires a separate build directory, so go ahead and create that, and then prepare it for compilation with the code in the book. We're going to use make, then make install, and you should be good to go with that. Pretty simple. This is a fairly short package to compile at only 0.4 SBUs. Because of the way that compiling the operating system works, we actually have to do binutils and GCC again. This is because certain programs that require them in the beginning are actually required to build the full thing. So we're going to install a linker and assembler and a few other tools for binutils, and then next we're going to do another pass of GCC. So unpack the binutils tarball again, change to that directory, create a build directory, and then prepare for compilation. In both cases, this can be slightly different, so to make sure you have the correct code for pass1 and pass2 separate. Use make and make install, and then we're going to prepare it for readjusting, which is a phase that we're going to do in the next chapter. You can find the code in the LFS book, but it's along the lines of make-c ld clean, and then the same thing again, copying a file over to the tools directory, and that's just going to prepare so that we're all ready to go. Make sure you do this and don't just stop at make install. Just a quick reminder, at the end of compiling the package, make sure you delete the directory that you created. Don't delete the tarball, but the directory in the sources folder. This will just clean up a lot of disk space because they're not necessary right now. GCC Pass 2 is a bit of a complicated compilation process. It takes 11 SBUs, so it's pretty long, so grab a cup of coffee or tea or whatever you drink, sit back, and we'll get through this. As usual, we're going to unpack the tarball, change to that directory, and then you can really just follow the code that's in the book. We're going to do some different configuration with an internal header, changing the dynamic linker, getting those other packages that, if you remember, we'd used before, creating a separate build directory, and then finally preparing it for compilation. All the code is in the Linux from scratch book, so make sure you're following that exactly. It's a lot easier than just typing it out. You can copy and paste it into your virtual machine or wherever you're doing that. Finally, use make and make install, then create a sim link using ln-svgcc space slash tools slash bin slash cc. This is because certain programs use C or GCC a little bit differently when you actually want them to use the same program. It's really just a shortcut that we're going to create so that every program that we want installs correctly. We're going to do another quick test for compiling and linking. Basically the same thing as before, slightly different code. Go ahead and create the two files using the code in the book and you should get a pretty similar output. Again, if you have a 64-bit machine, it'll have some other things mixed in there like lib64 and other things like that. As long as it's along the lines of requesting program interpreter and it looks nice and pretty, you should be good to go. Again, remove them with rm-v and then the files. Just a few more packages to go in this video and they're all pretty short, so we're almost done. The next package is TCL core and all of the next ones, these next four packages that we're going to compile are all to support tests for GCC and binutils, so they're pretty important to make sure everything's working properly. Go ahead and unpack the tarball, change the directory again, and we're going to prepare from compilation with a very simple code, just setting the prefix to slash tools. Go ahead and make the package, and now that that's complete, we're going to run this test suite, which we can now implement because these are installed. Use tz equals utc make test, and as long as everything goes through and you don't have any errors, you should be good to go. Use make install to finally install the package. We're going to make a certain directory in the tools directory writable so that we can remove some things from it later. 
Then we're going to install TCL's headers and finally make a symbolic link from TCL SH8.6 to a certain file in tools. So again, you can find this in the Linux from Sketchbook. Now, at this point, I'd like to just tell you about a little error that I was having in case you're looking at the video and find it confusing. There are some errors that have to do with time on my computer that shouldn't be an issue and you shouldn't have them. This is actually because I changed my system time because it was off halfway through compiling. This is a bad idea in the first place because certain packages use it when compiling to schedule when they're going to do things. So it gave me a few errors, but because I know it's not an actual issue and it's just because I did something stupid, it shouldn't be a big deal. You wouldn't have it for years. Expect is another program that's going to be kind of a helper program for the others, so go ahead and install it the usual way, unpacking the tarball change the directory, and then there's a few configuration things that we have to run to make sure everything looks, including preparing it for compilation. Use make, then make test, which we're going to kind of do as standard from now on, and finally install with scripts equals, and then just two quotes between the make and the install. DejaGNU is another framework for testing. It's a very short package, and it's also our second to last. We're going to unpack it, change the directory, prepare it for compilation, use just make install to build and install it in one fell swoop, and then finally use make check to go ahead and check it. For me, I got some errors that I was missing a file. The file was actually there, so I think it's okay, but if I have issues in the future, I'll definitely let you know and we'll definitely come back to this step. Finally, our last package is check, which is to check some code for C. We're going to unpack the tarball, change to the directory, prepare it for compilation, then run make, make check, and finally make install. Again, make sure you're deleting all of the folders that you create in the sources directory after you compile the package. So thank you for watching. Please consider leaving a like below if you'd like other people to be able to find this and create their own operating system. Either way, I'll catch you in the next one.